When I was a summer camp teacher for 3D animation, one of the things you quickly learn is that whatever you think is basic is not really all that basic. You can't just hand students a character rig and start teaching them how to animate it. You have to start with 3D animation itself. Not only the fundamentals of animation, but how a 3D program works and thinks. You need to start basicer. Basicer. There's a famous exercise in 2D animation that you may be familiar with, the bouncing ball. Not only does it teach half of the 12 principles in animation in one extremely simple exercise that anyone can understand, but the bouncing ball is found in nearly all organic animation you'll ever do, in some shape or form. If you break down an animation into its core shapes and movement, you can probably find a bouncing ball somewhere in there. So, it's an exercise that's not only excellent for beginners, but also important to keep in mind for experts too. Now the question is, does this exercise work in 3D animation? Yes, of course it does. But is it where I would start with complete beginners? Not really. Maybe as like the second exercise. Because remember, we're talking basic er. Anyone can pick up a pencil and draw a circle. There's no hurdles to overcome with the bouncing ball on paper. But for 3D animation on a computer, they don't even know how to use the program itself yet. That's the first hurdle. And I'm not talking about how to navigate the program, where settings are located or anything like that. I'm talking about stuff that's only in 3D animation. Stuff like keyframes, hierarchy, interpolation. None of this stuff is intuitive because it's what the computer wants, but the animator doesn't know that. No piece of paper or pencil is telling you what it wants you to do. And if you don't know what the computer wants from you, your bouncing ball will look pretty bad by default. They also won't learn principles like arcs or slow in slow out as easily, and end up with an animation that they're not proud of, which is discouraging. So, we want an exercise that both teaches animation principles and how to work with the computer to get what you want. Therefore, the exercise students started with to learn 3D animation is the pendulum. All they have to do is animate a three segment pendulum swinging back and forth. That's it. It's as simple as the bouncing ball, teaches most of the same principles, while also teaching students how 3D animation works, all at the same time. Students can even build the pendulum themselves if they want, which teaches them even more concepts behind 3D animation. But even if they're provided a rig to start with, the exercise still teaches them exactly what they need, and then some. And it will look good without much effort, which is exactly the kind of encouragement new animators need to keep animating. By the way, if you're watching this and thinking of trying this exercise yourself, it'll work in pretty much any 3D program. But the program I use for all my videos, including this one, is Maya, which is usually considered the industry standard. I use Maya Indie, but you could also use Maya's free educational license with an EDU email. And if you're curious about Maya and want to learn more about it, you should know about the upcoming Autodesk University 2024, a free virtual learning opportunity with hundreds of online classes hosted by Autodesk, the creators of Maya, and the sponsor of this video. Autodesk University, or AU, is a conference for the design and make industry, which brings together leaders and creators from all kinds of 3D design industries, like architecture, industrial design, and obviously, media and entertainment. They'll have topics from companies like Riot Games and how they use Maya and their animation workflow, or Atomic Cartoons and how they create 3D environments for their animated series. They'll even have a session from the VFX studio behind House of the Dragon and how they create dragons for the show. This year, AU is happening October 15th to the 17th in San Diego. But you don't have to be there in person. It's completely free to attend online from anywhere with hundreds of available classes and networking at on-demand community meetups. You can find more info at the link in the description below or by visiting autodesk.com slash doobly3d to register and get inspired. Thanks again to Autodesk for sponsoring this video and let's get back into it. So let's break down the pendulum exercise, how it's different, the steps to building and animating it, and what it teaches you about 3D animation itself. First, let's build the pendulum. This is a good exercise into how to navigate a 3D program, teaching you the move, rotate, and scale tools, as well as the concept of pivot points and hierarchy. When you start building the pendulum, the segment at the top won't control the segments below by default and will rotate from the center of the segment. We need to move the pivot point to the top of the segment, so it rotates from that point instead of the middle and we need to place the following segments into a hierarchy. This lets the segment at the top, the parent, control the segments at the bottom when it rotates, which are the children. Then you repeat the same steps for the following two segments, skipping the hierarchy change for the third segment since it's at the bottom of the hierarchy. Now, with the pendulum built, we can start animating. 
All we need are three poses. The pendulum swings left, then right, then back left again, so the animation can loop. But this is where things really differ from 2D animation, because it introduces the concept of keyframes. If we were animating a bouncing ball pose to pose, then the keyframes would look like this. Then you draw the frames in between. However, keyframes in 3D animation are pretty different. We can still pose the pendulum at the three extremes like you would draw the keyframes of a bouncing ball, but everything in between will be filled in by the computer automatically. Usually, it will also add the animation principle of slow in, slow out. The computer will slow the animation down as it reaches the keyframe. This is fine, but pretty bland. You can tell it's being animated by a computer, not by you. So you need to add more to it. And you can start by implementing some of the other principles the computer can't implement by itself, such as follow through. One of the other big differences with keyframes in 3D animation is that every segment of the pendulum can be keyframed. We don't have keyframes of just these three poses, we actually have keyframes for each segment of the pendulum at each of those three poses. They were just created at the same time for each segment, so they're all aligned at the same frame. But this means that each segment is moving at the same speed, at the same time. Nothing moves individually. In real life physics, the base of the pendulum will stop swinging first, while the end of the pendulum stops swinging last. This is the principle of follow through. The entire pendulum doesn't stop all at once. Different parts will stop first, then swing the other way after the first segment is already swinging towards the next destination. Knowing that each segment of the pendulum has individual keyframes of its own, we can use this to our advantage simply by delaying the second segment's keys just by a little bit and the third segment's keys just a little bit more than the second. There, now it looks a lot more natural and less computery, and that's because it's something we added, not the computer. This looks pretty good on its own, but we can go a few steps further. Two of the most important principles the bouncing ball teaches are timing and arcs. Just by animating the pendulum, these principles have already been implemented, but to really understand them, we can play with the space between keyframes, the animation curves, which defines how much something is rotating at each frame of the animation. So at the first keyframe, the pendulum is swinging at negative 45 degrees. On the next keyframe, it swings to 45 degrees, and then finally back to negative 45. But in between those two keyframes, at the bottom of its arc, it points straight down. So the curve shows us that it will reach zero degrees right in the middle. If these seem like a lot of numbers to you, don't worry. You don't need to interact with any numbers while animating. This is just to show you what the computer is thinking and what the curve it's showing you represents. What you really need to look at is the shape of the curve. Right now, the pendulum starts moving towards the next keyframe a little too quickly, which doesn't give the pendulum a lot of weight. So if we want it to hold onto the peak of its arc for a little while longer, we can adjust the curve to have a sharper drop off, like this. Now, in between those two keyframes, the pendulum is at the bottom of its arc for only a brief second, while at the end of its arc for a bit longer than before, making it feel heavier. The curves don't even need to be symmetrical. The curve could bounce, creating a sharp V-shape at the keyframe. This removes the easing the computer automatically applies, like if the pendulum came into contact with something. So instead of a smooth arc back and forth, the pendulum can seem like it's hitting something and bouncing off. And that's pretty much the pendulum. So what does all of this teach us? If the bouncing ball is found everywhere in animation, the pendulum is the same way for 3D animation, because it's basically an arm. We built an FK arm with a parent-child hierarchy and proper pivot points, and we animated it so that it doesn't just move into place, but eases in with an overlapping action in an appealing arcing motion. Along the way, we learned how keyframes, interpolation, and curves work in 3D animation. And we also learned how things naturally rotate in arcs, how you can change the individual timing of each segment so it feels more natural, and how adjusting the curve between keyframes can affect the weight and feel of the movement. This is pretty much how an arm moves in a walk cycle. It's like a pendulum. Now, with this knowledge equipped, we can come back to the bouncing ball. If you didn't know anything about keyframes or animation curves, your bouncing ball would look like this, and you wouldn't learn important principles like arcs and easing. But now, we can adjust the animation curves so that the ball bounces in an arcing motion, and doesn't slow down when it hits the ground. So that's my pitch. For 3D animation, leave the bouncing ball to the second exercise and do the pendulum first. It'll teach you way more about what you need to know for 3D animation especially, and should hopefully make the entire medium way less daunting when you tackle the bouncing ball or a walk cycle. 
And if you got anything out of this video, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear if you gave this exercise a try and how it helped you learn 3D animation fundamentals. If there's anything I miss from teaching, it's seeing people really excited about succeeding and trying new things. Thanks for watching.